I need a haircut. <laughs> Welcome everybody. This is episode 50 of Lockbriar Knits, a knitting podcast, and I'm your host Kelly coming to you from a very sunny very cold in Nova Scotia, Canada. So welcome everybody to all the returning viewers and subscribers. Thanks so much for coming back. And for all the new subscribers and viewers, uh, thanks for checking us out. I hope you'll stick around. There is a like and subscribe button on one of these sides, which I can never remember. So uh, feel free to uh, click either one or both, uh, and you can hit the little bell to get notifications when any new content comes up on my channel. So, welcome. Um, this is actually a day earlier than I normally record. It is Friday, March 1st, and I took the day off because I had some vacation days to use up from last year, and I thought, mm, I feel like I could use a day off. <laughs> so, here we are, a day early. It won't make any difference to you because it's probably still going to go up on Sunday like usual. But what am I drinking today? Look at that, people. Not tea. I needed a coffee this morning. I get up early. My husband got up at his usual time because he was going to work today. And uh, I decided to go down to the coffee shop, which is like a couple minutes from my house, and do a couple hours of writing there, which is my other job outside of the day job and the dying yarn job is uh, writing. So I went down there uh, to put a couple hours in on my current work in progress. And uh, then I came up here and voila, here we are. It's only like about 1030 in the morning. So I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm getting stuff done. Um, actually, I only got one thing done. This will be the second. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Maybe I need more caffeine. Meanwhile, back at the knitting podcast, uh, I'm just going to turn this. The lighting in here looks really funky today. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, if I look pasty and pale, it's that's why, because <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> so let's get into it. Administration, where to find me? I'm most active on Instagram, although I've been really like quiet on there lately. I just haven't had it been year end at work and just busy. I haven't had as much time to um, take pictures of anything. <laughs> so it's been a little quiet. I've been on there just not as often as normal. But either way, you can find me on Instagram at at Kelly L. Boyce and you can find me on, I always say you can find me on Lockbriar. You can find me on Ravelry at Lockbriar Knits. There's a group for the podcast. Also my username on um, Ravelry is Lockbriar altogether. Um, what else? The Etsy shop is Lockbriar Knits and there's a Facebook page Lockbriar Knits and I think that's everything. But I'll put it all down below in the little drop down where you can find me. I also put the show notes down there because uh, that seems the most reasonable place to put it if you're looking for something that I mentioned in the podcast. And I think that's it. So let's dive in because I got me a whip. Dun -a -dun -a -dun. And it's the second half of what I showed you last week as my hoe. Yes. <laughs> so these are my a Jingleberry socks. Uh, this is the Jingleberry colorway from a homespun house, which is one of, was one of her Christmas colorways. And I cast the first one on Christmas Eve. And I don't know why it took me so long to make these socks this time around. Um, Cause usually it doesn't take me that long to make socks. But anyway, <laughs> it just seemed to take a long time to make these socks. So I'm really glad to get them off the needles. I think that's sharp. <laughs> So this is, it's just like plain vanilla socks. So there's nothing fancy about it. Did my Aya Partridge heel flap gusset, the regular semi-rounded toe. I go till I have, I think 14 or 12 stitches left. And then I just kitchener the toe. And then just, uh, I did a short, 
a ribbon cuff on it this time. <laughs> it's feeling lazy, I guess. Um, but check out the colors on this are just so beautiful. There's such a mix. At first you think there's only red and green and then you see all these other like lovely pops of color. So, and I'm not hanging on and just wearing these at Christmas time either. These are going on my feet ASAP. Um, because I only have about, I think I have six pairs of knitted socks and they're in pretty heavy rotation. So they're starting to look a little <laughs> worse for wear in some instances. Um, so I'm looking to get some more um, socks into, into the rotation, some newer ones. Um, especially after Christmas, I usually knit about, I knit socks for all my nieces and nephews. So that was like six pairs of socks. My sister and my sister-in-law got a pair of socks. That was another two. My mom, I think my mom got a pair of socks. Maybe she didn't this year. No, I thought, I think, I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, so yeah, that was a lot of sock knitting for everybody else in like a really short period of time. And maybe that's why my sock mojo was a little off come January. Um, Cause I had spent two months just madly knitting socks, nothing but socks. Um, but yeah, now, you know, I wouldn't say I lost my sock mojo. I think I was just, Kind of dedicating the time to my Veronica Cardi, which is now at the office keeping me nice and warm. And we've had super sub-zero temperatures lately. So I have literally gone to work with a sweater and put my Cardi, my Veronica Cardi over my sweater. And it's nice and roomy, so it fits. Also, if you hear some like clipping, the dog's upstairs. I can hear him moving around. And if you hear any kind of creaking and rumbling, it's garbage day. So <laughs> that's what that'll be. Because uh, the windows are kind of right here facing onto the street where the garbage guys go. So anyway, so that's my finished object. Uh, that's it. I have no half finished objects. Nothing. But check this out. Speaking of socks. Um, what I'm working on is, wait now, find the right one here. So I cast on two pairs of socks, but here's why. Ta -da. So these are the pair I promised my sister, um, I would knit her. So I just like, I'm barely started. Um, let's see if I can, there we go. So this is, this is my Shut the Barn Door colorway, um, which is the one that she had picked out. This is one of my popular, really popular colorways. There's some left in the shop if anybody is looking to get some, um, but it's got like kind of a pale brownie gray base to it. And then it's got like kind of pops of red and orange and gold and stuff in it. So she had picked that color out and I started these the other day. So there you can kind of see the colors. So the reason I started these the other day was number one, I haven't seen this color knit up yet. So I really wanted to because I love it. Um, so then uh, the other reason I started these was because I told her I would do it. Um, her her socks after I had finished my Jingleberry socks. But if you remember, if you've watched the previous episodes, I had bought the Flexi Flips from Addy. Flexi Flips, yes. So basically these bad boys, not these ones in particular. Well, I mean, I did buy these ones, but these aren't the ones I'm using, obviously. So the Flexi Flips are three, for anyone who's not familiar, three needles, and they're sort of like a cross between, almost like knitting with magic loop and knitting with deep hints. Now I hate knitting 
with deep hands. I'm constantly um, knocking the needles out and dropping stitches and it's just a mess. So I really wanted to try the flexi flips because I love doing magic loop with my socks, but I thought this just might be a good alternative. So I cast on a sock and one second here. I didn't want to cast on the sock for my sister in case I found working with um, the flexi flips was making a huge mess and then I'd have to start all over again. So I thought, well, I'll do a pair of socks as a tester for me. And I'm knitting these ones. I mean, check out the colors in this. It's like a rainbow. Like, isn't it beautiful? So these are the uh, Log House Cottage Yarn, which I've used before. And this is in there. Uh, it's actually, it's an eight, it's their eight ply. <laughs> I so need a haircut. <laughs> I'm trying to let it grow long, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Anyways, this is their 8-ply squishy sock. It's 8020 super fine merino and nylon superwash, 420 yards. And um, they don't really have, it's their snowflake and starfish collection, but they don't really have any name or number on it. It just says each skein has an individual personality. Um, but... That's what the cake looks like. Uh, the, <laughs> it didn't come with the dog hair. <laughs> I added that myself with a little help from Cedar. Um, for any new viewers, I have a golden retriever. So there's hair. <laughs> there's golden retriever hair everywhere. Um, anyway, back to the flexi flips. So I'll set that over there. Um, <laughs> what did I do with the other needle? <laughs> Jesus, Kelly. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> get your get yourself together, Kelly. Pull it together. Coffee. Oh my God, I love coffee. Okay, so <laughs> basically. Um, and I'm, I'm going to sit up a bit, so see if I can show you this. Um, when you're knitting with these, it's basically you knit the same as you would with DPNs. Now the flexi flips have, I don't know if I can, <laughs> they have a pointed addy turbo end and Kind of the slightly more blunted regular addy point. So I prefer the pointed one, but you're basically just, I've seen, I watched um, Very Pink Knits when she, she has a kind of review and tutorial of them. I think, I think it was on hers where she sort of had, it's almost like she had them resting in her hands like that, like kind of here. But when I'm knitting with them, I don't know how well this is gonna show at your end, but um, now of course I took the glasses off, which was dumb. I find I just kind of ignore this back needle uh, originally and then eventually as I go along, I'll kind of rest it on my pinky finger here just to sort of keep it out of the way. So I don't know if this shows very well. Let's see. I'm wearing my puntilla sweater today, by the way, which uh, any regular viewers know. <laughs> I've probably had this on the uh, 
the podcast quite a few times because it's really next to the Veronica Cardi, which at work, which is at work, is the only handmade sweater I own. <laughs> Because my Tanya ended up going to my niece due to the fact that I couldn't get my arms through the sleeves and my weekender isn't done yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, when I'm knitting, I'm really not even paying too much attention to the back needle. So here's one thing I did have, I did struggle with originally and I think I'm kind of over it now was when I got to the end I had a bad <laughs> habit of dropping this because when I'm I'm so used to doing magic loop that this end was attached so when I let go of it it was still there but <laughs> I kept forgetting so I would just let go of this and then I'd be like hunting around on the floor for it so I've kind of gotten used to not dropping it now but um, one thing I did note, and this was probably just uh, until I got used to it, and I probably still have a little bit to go before I really get super comfortable knitting with it. Um, I know in uh, Very Pink Knits, in her tutorial, she said that... Um, like keep going like go a few inches knitting it and then you'll start to get the rhythm of it and that's exactly what happened is that kind of once you get to a certain point like once you knit about that much sort of you do you get the rhythm of it and you realize oh this is it's really easy it's it's comfortable I'll definitely keep using this for socks um, the great thing is, too, is that I have a DPN Cozy that came with one of my project bags, which is buried under there right now, I think, from um, Chestnut Fibers. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I love these things, but I don't use DPN. So now all I do is just pop these in like that. Boop. Boop. So now I can use them. My little sock sticks out <laughs> so I know what sock I'm knitting on. Um, but I do really like these and I've got the other ones I have are for um, kind of sweater sizes so that I can do my sleeves in um, using the flexi flips rather than going back and forth in the magic loop which I think will be a little um, maybe a little smoother. And I'm not noticing at this point, anyways, any laddering in the sock. Um, now I'm not sure what it will be like when I get to the heel. Like doing the the flap part should be fine because you're just going to be going back and forth, back and forth. But then when I have to pick up the stitches, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> so. Those are ongoing. These are in my Tangled Skein project bag, which I love. Oops. So I've shown that on the uh, podcast the last few times. I love this one. And that's her little marker. And again, the dog hair. Look at that. Like, honestly. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you how often I swift or sweep the floors, but I don't know. I guess I would rather have dog hair than no dog. So, you know, you get used to it after a while. I think you only realize how much dog hair is kicking around uh, when you're in a position that somebody else is going to see it. So, anyway, <laughs> that's my story. Uh, so that's the socks. So yeah, so I am kind of working on, on both of them right now. Um, just because I want to get my sisters done, but I also want to stay in the rhythm of knitting with the Addy Turbo. So I'm kind of switching back and forth. Um, and about, I'm going to say two weeks ago, I was, we had, um, a really 
we had a storm and then it got icy and like because it went from snow to ice pellets so I went out to try to get in the car like early in the morning and as our driveway is on a hill so I got to the step and then I had to get from the step to my car so I'm holding on to the banister um and I step on the pavement or of the driveway and my feet just literally almost go right out from under me one foot just went flying the other one I managed to <laughs> like keep stationary but I spun around to try to catch myself but I wrenched my thumb backwards and it is still really sore and I don't think I sprained it but I think I definitely strained the joint here but I don't I'm just like so accident prone the shoulder the thumb my ankle was all jammed up the last week although that was not from anything I did specifically klutzy wise just <laughs> my ankle gets jammed up I think it was because I've gone back to weight training after seven months off eight months off and uh, my body's sort of realigning itself and I've got a my right foot is all messed up anyway so it took the brunt of it anyway here nor there um so next project uh the bird of a feather shawl <laughs> the shawl that would not end i did get oh, there's my flexi tube um i did get a little more done on this not a whole lot i literally i from the last time i just put another um just stuff called mohair uh in it mohair section in it so the next section i do is going to be another lace section i don't know if it's going to be identical to this one am i showing you inside right side out here we go I think it's this way yeah <laughs> so uh, the next section is going to be a lace section so um, when I get home I knit every day and what I do is when I get home after we eat supper usually my husband will go down and watch some TV and I will knit for about 45 minutes to an hour but uh, and watch try to catch up in my podcast watching so if I prefer during that time if it's just sort of straight knitting nothing I have to put a lot of attention into if I think I'm going to be interrupted so I definitely don't want to be doing lace or any kind of you know shaping that I have to keep track of where I am so I didn't want to start the lace section until the weekend when I knew I could kind of have some time to myself and be able to concentrate without any interruption because lace is not my forte. Um, and I just, I know, I just know I need quiet time. So I'm getting this all discombobulated. I really want to finish this. I don't even know how far along I am. I think I, I think I have a ways to go. Um, but it's, the thing is, is that these, right, just kind of plain section here, they go along pretty quickly. Now it's taking a little longer now as it's expanding out this way. But this, like, the lace section is only like every few sections. So it's not like that's happening all the time. So I think if I can just kind of get the lace section done this weekend, then I can just do the regular ones in the evenings through the week and yeah kind of try to get this done I really want to get this off the needles because I want to start working on my own design but I don't want to start doing that until I can really kind of dedicate my time to it so this is coming along I really want to get it done because I want to wear it too but it's already well, I mean, today's March 1st, but the weather here will be, you know, shawl wearing weather until probably mid-May. Um, and that's, that may be being optimistic. <laughs> so, 
Um, I'm going to keep working away on that. Sorry, get down. Get down. Okay, you know what? The uh, mohair is very static, static, clingy. Is that a thing? Um, so, yeah. So, I have been putting some work into that. But here's what had a good portion of my time. The Weekender. Bye. The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Oops. So, I'm at the point now where I'm shaping... I have the hiccups. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. Okay. So, hang on here. I was really hoping to have the front and back done, but then, kind of like with the shawl, I hit a point where I knew I was going to have to concentrate. So, hang on, I'm just going to flip this right side out, because you knit it, anyone who's not familiar with Weekender, you knit it kind of inside out, so you're just doing knit in the round for the most of it. Or once you get to the separation part, you're going back and forth. But, and I don't even know if I'm working on the back or the front. I think I'm on the back. Maybe not. No, I'm on the front. Um, <laughs> it's rolling up on me. So I'm at the part right now where I'm going to be doing the shaping for the um, neck. So let's see if I can find a good picture of it here. I'm at the part where I'm going to start doing, let's see if I can, like the neck along here where you can see the stitching changes. Um, so again, that was one of those, there's some shaping to it. I got the short rows done. That went off fine. Everything went fine. I think it looks okay. I'm not really seeing any noticeable gaps. So I think I think I did it okay. I always watch, right before I do the short rows, I always watch the um, Very Pink Knits. To ter to ter I keep saying Very Pink Knits. I think it's Very Pink Knits, not Very Pink. Yeah, it's Very Pink Knits. Sorry. I think I put it down below in the last episode, so I'll try to remember to do that again because she has the best tutorials. Like, they're awesome. It's like my go-to. Um, so she's got uh, wrap and turns and how to do the wrap and turns and then how to pick them up kind of in two back-to-back -back tutorials. And I always watch it right before I do it. And then I usually stop and do watch it again right before I go to pick up the wrap and turns. So uh, I, I, that kind of helps. So um, yeah, so I think I'm ready to do that part. But again, I wanted to wait until, back up a little, till I had some time that I could just sort of dedicate it without interruption. So I'm, this is kind of blown out. The color's blown out a little. Let's see if I can. Nope. Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> there. That's a good representation of the colors. That'd back up a little, not get close. Um, so, yeah, so it's going to have a nice amount of positive ease to it. You know what I would really love to do is to do this in a fingering weight. Like, this is worsted weight, and I'm knitting it in. Um, oops. The Knit Picks Wool of the Andy Superwash, and this is the Persimmon Heather color. But I would love to do one of these in kind of a lighter weight, like a, a fingering weight. I'm not really sure how you would do that. Like maybe if I did it, but did the large size maybe, like this is in small or like maybe medium or large. I don't know. Does anybody know? Could you do that? But I would just love to have one that's like this style, but a little lighter weight for, um, you know, when it starts to get a little warmer and you're not really 
pulling out your worsted white sweaters to wear. So I don't know. And I've got a really nice blue. <laughs> it's totally blanked. I think it was, it's the one that my husband got me for Christmas from Knit Picks. It was the, I think it was the Stroll Tweed that I got. And it was in, I think it was called Prussian Heather, maybe? I don't know. But it's like this beautiful blue color. Um, and I would love to try to make one of these in that. It was in a fingering weight. So I'm really enjoying this. It's it's really well, um, the instructions are really well written. I know what I'm doing. I'm not like kind of questioning it. There is the part I'm about to start that I was a little um, unsure of because it sounds, because at first I was like, oh, like you're not doing the spine here. Um, but then again, that makes sense because you're doing the almost like a ribbing along the neck and it's I think it's you call it a boat neck the way it's shaped so that should be fine I think I just need to like don't question the pattern just do it because I don't know enough this is only my fourth sweater so I don't really feel like I know enough about sweater construction <laughs> to start questioning it and going rogue um so I just have to trust in the pattern and just knit. So I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to work on this afternoon. Um, and get that done and then get started on the back and try to get as much done of that as possible. The great thing is because it's worsted weight, it goes really fast. So I really, really want to have this done maybe by the next podcast. I don't know if that's too ambitious or not, but I'm going to try. That's my goal. Try to have this done by the next podcast. Even if it's not blocked yet. <laughs> It'll be like right, right before <laughs> I start filming. I'll be going like mad trying to finish the sleeves. So yeah, that's what I, I am going to try to do that. I'm going to put a lot of work on this this weekend. Because um, it's a three day weekend for me. So I think that'll help. I think that'll help. So that's the Weekender by Andrea Mowry. I love it. I can't wait to wear it. That's the other thing too, is that I really want to get it done so I can wear it because again, it's March and March is a crappy month here. Like literally it's the worst because you're so done with winter and, um, Winter is not done with you. So I think we have two storms coming, kind of back to back. Uh, one, I think it's supposed to snow Saturday night into Sunday, and then we get hit with another one Sunday night. Oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm ready. I'm ready for, I'm ready for the warmer weather. And I love wearing my like knitwear, but I'm done with the winter. <laughs> So this is in my loop bag, which I love. Um, that comes from my local yarn store. Her mom makes these and I have probably like five of them. Like I've got this one. I've got this one, which is an Alice in Wonderland kind of theme. I've got this one, which is birds. I've got this one. Oh, yeah, look which is polka dots. <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I've got this one, which is wine glasses. <laughs> so I don't know if that's all of them either. There may be one more kicking around. So <laughs> big fan, big fan. So anyway, that, that is all my whips. Um, yeah, that's all the whips. So, la, 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 I did buy, remember how I said I wasn't going to really buy any yarn until uh, probably June and I was going to try to knit through my stash. So, um, 
I think it was literally the next day I bought yarn and then I was like, oh yeah, but in my defense, <laughs> look at it. It's so pretty. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> look at that. Look at those colors. They are so muted and beautiful. I literally, these are from, these are from Coop Knits. So for starters, my previous dog was named Cooper and just like the best dog in the world. Like just an awesome, awesome dog. So anytime I see anything with Coop on it or Cooper, it's, it's automatically a fave. So these are DK and she has a book. Um, and I can't remember the name of the book, but I will try to, uh, I will try to find it and add a link to it, but it's for knitting um, in these, in like stripes and different designs that you can do with these socks or with this yarn. But I think I'm actually going to do a hat with them. And I think I'm gonna do the church mouse um, hat which I've knit before and I knit it in red and gray and I really love the look of it but um so I think I might do these but I honestly want a sweater's quantity of this yarn in pretty much every color there was like the blues there were a couple shades of blue one was more of a tealy there was a green that was just gorgeous there was I think there was a gray um oh my god it was just she does also bright colors the one my local yarn store had in um were kind of the nice muted almost rustic colors like these and um I'm much more this is definitely more my wheelhouse but <laughs> I've been fondling it a lot it's starting to come out of the skein <laughs> So, uh, I really, really, this, this color has got to be my favorite. Like I really want a sweater's quantity of yarn, but that's going to have to wait because as anybody who's watched this podcast for any length of time knows, I have a metric shit ton of sweater's quantity of yarn and I need to get it knitted up. So you get 122 yards per 50 grams, which is a 50 gram thing. So, and this was 1140, which is an odd amount. <laughs> $11.40 cents Canadian, so I'm not sure what that'd be US. Um, and it's 75% super, 75 percent fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, so it's perfect for socks. Um, and now that I say that, I'm almost like, oh, it'd be so nice to have like a nice warm pair. And because of the yardage, I think you'd be better off getting three. So what I might do, see now I'm changing my mind. I'm thinking I could have like the blue as the body and then do the, um, maybe the heel, toes and cuffs in this color. Oh, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But it's just, I wish you could feel how like squishy and soft this is. So, um, yeah, so that's Coop Knits. Sock yeah, DK. Um, and I'll try to remember to put the link down below. And the other thing I got, this doesn't count because I had already purchased this beforehand. It's part of my the sock club that I joined. So if you are part of a homespun house Game of Thrones sock club and you haven't gotten your skein yet, although I'm pretty sure you have because this is the February colorway, not the March. Um, I think it takes a little longer to get to me because I'm up in Canada. So if you're in the US, you've probably got yours well in advance. But this is the Targaryen colorway. And once again, I swear Molly outdid herself. Look at the incredibly gorgeous colors in this. Like, oh my God, it's beautiful. 
it's just beautiful. So the first one, January's, was um, House Stark. House Stark, is that what it was called? Um, yep, yeah, House of Stark. And then this one is uh, Targaryen. So I want to find a project. The The Sock Club was for three months. It was January, February, March. So there's one more to go. I'm curious to see what that's going to be. Um, so I want to find a project that uses all three of the colorways. So that'll be a big project because <laughs> yeah, it's 100 grams, uh, 407 yards. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to find. So any suggestions? Because I want to... I want to use up all of the skeins or as much of the skeins as I can. I, you know, I've got, I've got all this like leftover yarn and then there's another container box over there of leftover yarns. And I'm really not a scrappy blanket kind of girl. Um, I don't want to do the granny stripe crochet. I had originally thought about that and then um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't really like the look of the granny stripe blankets that much. It's not, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, it's not my thing. So if I do a scrappy blanket, I don't want to just do squares that have to, knit, you know, weave in all those ends. If I do do a scrappy blanket, I may do like a scrappy stripe blanket where I literally just go back and forth, um, maybe do like a garter edge and then stocking knit stitch back and forth. I don't know. Um, or maybe go corner to corner, something like that. Just to use up because it's literally languishing all these like odd bits and leftovers. So I'm trying to look for projects where I don't have as much leftover um, yarn, which when you're doing socks, unless you know, I'm a short person, so I don't need a long leg. I have small feet. I don't need. So when I do socks, I always have a fair bit left over, as you can see. So I'm going to do up some scrappy socks. I've done the um, kind of the scrappy uh, Land of Sweets cow that um, Helen Stewart did in, I think it was her 2017 knit vent. And um, you know, projects like that, but still like the more socks you knit, it grows, <laughs> it grows. So anyways, those were my, um, my two purchases and I prom, I'm going to, no, I, I promise I won't buy any this month. I think I said that last month. So I'm going to try really hard not to, um, but at the same time, I really like supporting my local yarn shop and I love buying, <laughs> just love buying yarn, but okay, you know what? I'm going to try really hard for the month of March not to buy any yarn. I'm allowed to buy accessories, <laughs> but not yarn. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I haven't done a shop update for da, 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 a few weeks and a few weeks, two weeks. There's, there's still plenty in the shop. So I think I've kind of been holding off because I do have to buy some more yarn, um, supplies. I'm starting to run a little low. So I think I've been stretching out my updates. I'll probably do an update in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm cooking up some new colorways and coming up with some new ideas and things I want to try. But uh, this weekend is going to be busy. Next weekend, maybe I'll have time next weekend. Maybe not. Nope, next weekend I have to get my taxes pulled together. 
So yes, anyways, in a few weeks, sometime in March, I will probably be doing another update. I will let you know when, but there is plenty in the shop now. There's um, Shut the Barn Door. There's uh, uh, there's the double dips, which are, uh, they kind of create a micro striping effect. I don't know if I have one down here to show you or not. So this is one of the double dips, which you can see does like a micro striping effect so i have two two of those in the shop one is called yield the other is called golden twilight uh there's shut the barn door there's woodsy is back in the shop um I'm trying to think what else we've got in there uh, but go take a look the link is down below uh there are a few things left on clearance i don't think there's a whole lot somebody cleaned me out the other day <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome um yeah so just go take a look if you want uh ba -ba -ba -ba, i think i think that's it so let's see what's going on in life stuff um not a whole lot we i survived year end at work um <laughs> somewhat <laughs> it was a bit of a crazy go there for a while and um, I'm back at the gym, kind of going hardcore at the lifting of the weights. And today I start back to yoga again. Uh, I think I've got enough strength in my upper body for any of you new viewers. I had shoulder surgery in November to repair a full tear in my rotator cuff. Um, and then in the last month, I got the okay to uh, go back to my regular uh, physical activities, which was weightlifting and um, yoga. So I did the weightlifting for a month and um, now I'm going to start back at the yoga because I think that's really going to help me. Like I've got full range, but it's still when I get to kind of here, I can feel it starts to get a little weak and ugh, I have to kind of push to straighten it. So the yoga is definitely going to help with the stretching and the mobility for that area to make sure that it doesn't uh, stay stiff <laughs> and that I can get my flexibility and mobility back in there. So there is an ins yoga instructor at the yoga studi studio that I go to and she has a class on Monday and Wednesday at seven o'clock and I always try to go to her class because they are amazing. Um, and she's, She's about maybe my height, definitely no taller, I don't think. And she's just this, like, she's probably around my age, but she's like this spitfire and she's so sweet. And then you get in the yoga studio and you're like, I think she's trying to kill me, but you're having so much fun. And it is such a good class. I feel so good when I get out of that. So she also does a class at five o'clock on Friday. So since I'm off today, I'll be able to make that one. So that's what I'm aiming for. Um, I finished reading a book which was so good. It was called The Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. And it was so good. It like kind of took place in the present day, but it also flashed back to Leningrad during the Second World War when the Germans were attacking. Um, and it was just really, really well written. I really enjoyed it. So, um... The next book I started, I finished that one earlier in the week and I started a new one, which actually sort of kind of falls into the same theme where it's, um, it's like Russian, it's a Russian fairy tale in a way. Um, it's hard to explain. It's called The Bear and the Nightingale and I'm totally blanking on the author, but I'll put it down below. And it's a series of books. This is the first one. Um, my sister has the second one she's gonna lend me. And I think the third one just came out in hardcover. So it's, um, I'm maybe, I think I've read two chapters and I can't put it down. So I'm probably gonna spend some time reading that this weekend. And it's not actually, it's not a super thick book. It's like maybe like that, that much maybe. Um, and I don't get a whole lot of reading time, which, you know, I'm trying to trying to find more time to read. I'm trying to get to bed a little earlier so I can read before I go to bed. Um, but it's like, you know what? I really need to retire <laughs> so that I have time to do all the things that I really want to do. Um, I wish it was that easy. 
But uh, anyways, it's a really good book. It's a really, my sister read the second book and she said it was as amazing as the first. So um, I'm probably going to have to buy the third one in hardcover if, because I, I hate waiting <laughs> when I'm reading a series. I just want to keep going. So that's been really good. Uh, what have we been watching? We watched the third, um, it's not, the, well, I guess it's the third season of True Detective, but each season is a completely different story with different characters. Um, and season three was phenomenal. It was so good. Um, I haven't watched season two because I didn't hear a whole lot of really good things about it, but I did watch season one and it was like one of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, and season three lived up to that easily. It was so good. The actors in it were amazing. The storyline was, you know, disturbing, but also really good. Uh, so we're actually going to go back and watch season two and give it a shot. I just, I haven't seen any of season two, so I have no idea if, you know, I've heard it wasn't as good as season one. And then again, that was a lot to live up to because season one was phenomenal. So we've also been going through uh, watching Veep um, with Julia Luigi Dreyfus. So that's hilarious. We've been watching that. Um, and I think that's about it. So that's all that's kind of going on. Uh, we went out to the schooner house last weekend to check on the deer and we could still see the three um the three prints of the three deer and it didn't look like the any of the prints showed one of the deers sort of dragging the leg because the mama deer had done something to her leg so she couldn't put any weight down on it the back in january um but we put some deer feed down for them too because i thought my concern is if she was injured, she wouldn't be able to kind of scrape through the snow to get to the grass. Uh, so we've been putting some feed down for them just to be on the safe side. And so I'm hoping if it's nice next weekend, we can kind of go down there or maybe on Friday evening, take the dog and then spend the weekend down there. Um, just get away from the city for a few days. And I think also this weekend, my husband and I are going to... Uh, finalize the details for our Dublin trip and maybe book the hotel and the flights and or at least figure out where we want to stay and what flights we want to take so we can get a direct flight from Halifax to Dublin apparently. So yeah that's about it. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go and I'm gonna get on with knitting my weekender and then I'm going to go to yoga. So I will see you guys uh, in a couple of weeks. And thanks so much for stopping by to all the returning viewers and subscribers. Thanks so much. And for the new viewers and subscribers, hope you'll check us out again. And until then, happy knitting and I'll see you soon. Bye.